Hello everybody and welcome back to HJ Goes Live. I'm Akisha, I'm digital editor here at Hairdressers Journal and today we are joined by the wonderful Michelle Soltan, the textured hair specialist and creative director of InView Curls. Thank you for joining us today Michelle. Thank you for having me. How are you? I'm really well, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. I haven't been rained on yet. So I'm happy. You haven't had the big rain. I know. Do you know what? It's so humid right now. I'm just I like know. sweaty bath. <laughs> yeah. I feel bad. Like, I'm doing a textured hair talk and my hair's literally, you can't see it. But. Girl, we can see the texture. It's all good. It's oh. all good. <laughs> um, oh, we've just had, I've just had a message from someone saying we've got an error on Facebook. So we might have a bit of a delay on going live to Facebook, but we'll start and then... Okay. It's been recorded anyway, so okay. anyone that misses the beginning, they can catch it. Okay. But I wanted to speak to you about textured hair in lockdown. Mm. Because we've seen, I've seen, and I know that after we've spoken recently, that you've seen going back into salon, that a lot of people have, in, have started embracing their curls and their coils and just the natural, whatever natural texture that, that you have. Absolutely. So, um, yeah. Absolutely. Thought, it's, been, it's been a real... It's just been an amazing time, like returning back to the salon. Mm -hmm. um, literally all I do at the moment is huge makeovers. Nobody, and like any hairdresser listening in, any hairdresser will tell you, I think, because everyone I know is the same, the same. Nobody's coming in for just like a little trim or a little tidy up. Yeah. Everybody is having major makeovers. Yeah. The, the most amazing thing is that, so I, I would say a good, maybe 85% of our clients are coming in and they, you know, who, people that used to have relaxers or used to have curly perms. And now I'm like, do you know what? I've been through lockdown. I can feel my roots. I've got curly hair. I didn't know I had curly hair. Wow. Let's, let's see what can happen with this curly hair. And yeah. they're cutting off their relaxers and they're going natural. And it's amazing. I'm yeah. just, it's literally so exciting. It must be so exciting as a hairdresser. It really is. It really is. It really is. We've, um, it, it's just, I mean, there's been so, so obviously so much has happened throughout lockdown. Um, but I just feel like people are willing to take a risk now. They are, they're just excited about their future. They're sort of fearless. I, I mean, the very first person I, I cut on uh, July the 4th, she was a client that for maybe 30 years of her life had been relaxing her hair. 30 years of relaxing wow. every six weeks. She was 100% gray also. And she was coloring her hair ev with every relaxer. And I had been sort of talking to her, you know, uh, late last year, earlier in the year, sort of saying, look, you know, let's go natural. And she's like, oh, not sure, not sure. I'll do it when I'm ready. Anyway, literally, she was my first client on July the 4th. And I said, right, that's it. No excuses. You've just survived a whole pandemic. Let's do this. And she was like, okay. <laughs> she has honestly, she said for the first time from leaving the salon, her husband complimented her. And she said, although he would always love her hair, he went, oh my God, look how beautiful, look how sexy you look. And for the first time she's felt like herself and she's not like a slave to, you know, a relaxer or, or yeah. coloring her hair. She's just free. She's like liberating. It's like liberating. Completely. Yeah. Completely. Taking it back to before when the salon was kind of winding down and you mm -hmm. knew that you probably would have to close and start doing, like stop your session work and stuff. Yeah. How did you feel back then and, and comp like comparison to how it is now? Like oh how God. have you been for the last five it's months? It's literally like two different worlds. So when it first happened, obviously panic, um, fear. We were so scared about what was happening. Just the fear of the unknown. Just, you know, I don't know about any other hairdressers, but most hairdressers that I know, you know, we literally leave school and start working. And so I'd never had... A break this long even when I'd had my son who's now 16 I've never had a break for I think I returned to work when he was like two months old because I had to wow, you know yeah. so this was the longest break that you know ever had um but sort of you know when I realized that it was going to be okay it's like actually <laughs> I really started to enjoy it I enjoyed the yeah. time off um I enjoyed spending time just being a mum 
yeah. just, you know, and just like resetting what was going on in here. You know, yeah. because like I said, it's the first, it's the longest and the first break I've ever had in years and years and years. And so sort of reanalyzing everything has just been magical. It really has. Do you feel like it's made you more creative? Yeah, do you know what? I just, I feel like I've got my passion back. Yeah. I feel like I've got my passion back. What's really weird is that obviously um, I was doing a lot of session work before, so doing yeah. lot of TV stuff, which can often, often be very repetitive, really fun. Like, don't get me wrong. We have, I've had amazing experiences and really fun, mm -hmm. but often it can be quite repetitive and quite generic. And, you know, you've just got to recreate the same look five days in a row and sit there for 16 hours staring at a ponytail. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> actually where that work hasn't picked up as much and I'm just back in the salon I feel yeah. like I've reignited my love for hairdressing yeah and I am loving being in the salon at the moment just our yeah. new our new way of working you know just sort of seeing one person at a time and you know you you just don't have that pressure of having maybe two or three people in at the same time when you're yeah. trying to juggle right you've got a highlights over there and you've got relax and you've got a you know and no it's yeah returning back has just been lovely it really has how has it changed now that you're back in the salon because when i think of going back when i used to go to for instance with hype it was like it was hype it was no but in a <laughs> no not in a bad way but it was just quite always busy and that's busy. a testament to how many people love yeah. the salon no but it was always very busy what's it like now i mean do you know what it, it's very strange because that sort of, you know, we sometimes would, on a Saturday, we'd be like, oh my God, it's like the carnival in here. There was so <laughs> many people, but the buzz and, you know, like you're just getting through and you're bouncing off each other. But actually it's, I've always wanted to work in an Afro salon that wasn't overbooked and didn't have six people waiting for you. So for me, this is ideal. Yeah. This is ideal. It's very different, but I, you know, I'm a person, I like to connect with my clients on a really personal level. And this time that we're getting as hairdressers where you can only see one, but it's, it's amazing. And you're really connecting with people and you're having a chance to really sit down and connect with them. And, you know, any hairdresser will tell you, we're not only hairdressers, we're therapists, you know, we're counselors, we, we, you know, we're involved in their lives so much. And just having the the time to be able to sit and chat to your clients and, and sort of really help them. Um, yeah. It's been, it's second to none. It really is. Can't do complain. You, do you, did you ever worry? Because obviously with things like relaxers, people do, you come in every six weeks. Yeah. And you see like, and if you don't, your hair doesn't look the same because you've got the two Julian textures. Yeah. Do you ever think if people don't, want to relax their hair anymore I might lose them as a client or like that they won't come in as as regularly yeah I mean it's definitely been the case but I think you know people that still want to continue relaxing their hair fine mm. you know if that's but I just think that I, I keep saying this word time we've just been given the time to for people to be able to think it out a little bit more yeah. So when a client comes into the salon and says, right, I've come in for my relaxer and a color, I now have half an hour more to really sit down next to them or a bit <laughs> away and say, look, why are you relaxing your hair? You know, what is your lifestyle? Rather than just getting on and doing it, yeah. you can now sort of break it down and go, right, okay, well, look, yeah, you used to have a relaxer. Why don't we try something else? Like we're doing a lot of um, smoothing treatments you know just to smooth, help smooth, help people with that transition i have i have a texture release texture yeah i mean honestly i i we literally can't keep our stock in it, it's literally we're ordering every week because so yeah. many people are transitioning using yeah. that which is an amazing product um so yeah i mean personally i wasn't worried because i know there are always options and yeah. i you know i if I can have that time to be able to explain to a client, look, okay, this is why relaxing isn't 
necessarily the best thing. I mean, so, don't get me wrong. Some people still have relaxes and it works for their lifestyle and you've got to take that into consideration. But what I, I'm never going to be that type of hairdresser that just a client comes in, they've asked for relax and I'm just going to give it to them because I'm yeah. always going to question and be like, right, is this right for you? Consultation. Consultation is yeah. key. It's Thank absolute you. key. And just, you know, like I said, having the time to be able to do that where we didn't in the past have the right amount of time, you yeah. know, it's, this is, it's great. Did any clients contact you during lockdown for advice? Do you know what, as a salon, um, we, we came up with the idea of having a, a WhatsApp helpline. So we sent out a message to all of our clients saying, look, if you need any advice, anything at all, product advice, um, you know, you can WhatsApp us, it's direct links to us. If, you know, client, and clients used it so much, we, were, mm -hmm. we just thought, oh, you know, one or two of our regulars would get into, no, it became a real thing. Hotline. Yeah, a proper <laughs> hotline. Like, it, you know, we were having to pass the phone around to different stylists because yeah. we were still sort of using that as a tool to be in contact with our client clients. Um, and we're, just to sort of, as a salon, using all the digital options was, it was really cool and real, you know, we suddenly, yeah. we were like, right, we need to get on Instagram more, we need to be using our Facebook more. It's, thank God for those tools. Thank yeah, God. Yeah, definitely. Mm. What kind of um, bits of advice did you get asked the most? Um, I mean, a lot of people are asking about colouring their hair. Um, and I was just like, don't do it. Just wait. <laughs> You're not yeah. going anywhere, put a head tie on, get yeah. that L'Oreal Root Touch spray. I swear they must have made so much money in London. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah we, I was just like, don't do it, please don't do it. And actually, I've been personally, I've been very lucky that a lot of my most of my clients didn't yeah. touch their hair. They're just like, do you know what? We're just going to wait for you. And yeah, you know, it is what it is. And what about the clients that did touch their hair? What did you, did you have any kind of, not mishaps, but anything that you had to fix after lockdown? What? Touch words. Touch words. I've not had, I don't think I've had any clients that have really come with a major disaster. Okay. So, do you know what? I think my clients are probably quite, they're like, we don't want to touch you on touch my hair if you're going to tell me. <laughs> yeah, it's the fair like, of the tale. We know what you're like. We know what you're like. You, we'll know you'll fix it. A couple of clients, the worst thing has been, um, when I say the worst thing, it's not the worst thing, um, clients that maybe left their weave in the entire length of lockdown. and the, the entire length? Wow. Yeah. Which is... That would have been <laughs> interesting to cut out on my day. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Just gonna, oh my god. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it is what it is, though. But you know what? Like the transformation. So Sorry, this is, and this is what hairdressers. This is what we do. We don't want to just do like the little. We don't want to do a trim. I want to make you over. I want to take yeah. you from feeling absolutely poo to <laughs> <laughs> like amazing when you walk out the door. So whatever it takes, and like I'm willing to do it. I don't care. Yeah. I love I've been loving seeing your transformations you've been putting Honestly, up on Instagram. They're getting so much love. They're getting so much love. And like like I said, it, it, we've also got the time to even take pictures because we always do transformations, but even yeah. more so now. But now we've even got the time to like do a whole photo shoot with our clients and they're up for it. They're feeling great. Yeah. You know, they're so relieved to be in the salon and be around you. So yeah, yeah no, it's been <laughs> it's so fun, honestly. What um what Bits of advice did you give about home care for curls? Home care for curls? <sighs> what did I get? Do you know what? Obviously, it was all, you know, just get some moisture on your hair, use moisturising treatments as much as possible, mm -hmm. um, get steam. I, I was on uh, Amazon a lot of the time, sort of sending people links to where they could get steam caps, where yeah. they could get products. What was amazing, though, with the salon um, and our owner I mean, he is probably one of the kindest, sweetest people you'll ever meet. And he was so concerned that, you know, we couldn't open a salon. Because I was like, why don't you just open a salon one day a week and just get people to come and buy their products? He was like, no, we can't do it. You know, it's against the rules and I'm not breaking any rules. So he set up a, like a hotline, another hotline, wow. where people could phone the salon and buy products and he was delivering them personally. Oh, that's so sweet. Honestly, I was just like... 
you're mad but he's like no i have to do it like it's our clients and we want to keep them safe and we want to keep you know especially your elderly client exactly and we had so many like people he was like literally postman pat delivering hair products um but yeah no it was all about you know going back to your question just moisture 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 you know and just not to worry yeah i think a lot of people you know were sort of really stressed in the beginning oh my god my hair my hair and actually we were helpless yeah we were absolutely helpless so what kind of techniques, so I've, I've, as you've been seeing, I've been trying to nail the techniques myself <laughs> um, of like braid outs and twist outs. What like advice were you giving in regards to that for especially coiled Afro hair? So, um, I mean, do you know what? We're, we're lucky enough to have like loads of tutorials and yeah. things like that on YouTube. And I think... It, it, it was really hard, obviously, to give advice over the phone in terms of, but we were sending people links to tutorials, like how to do twist outs, what products would be best for your hair type, teaching yeah. people, you know. It was, it was almost like a, a, a whole education because people who didn't necessarily know their curl type before, we were having to tell them about it. Yeah. Um, which I think knowing your curl type was almost quite an american thing up to a short time ago i agree yeah. um it's, it's quite new to the uk so we i think as hairdressers had to learn it quite quickly because you'll still find a lot of hairdressers don't know like what what 4c or 3 8 what like well, what yeah. so we you know as a salon we had to learn it quite quickly yeah. um if they didn't know it already and then sort of having to teach clients not in person but like over the phone or yeah. like sending them tutorials so yeah it was all about you know teaching people that and then what techniques worked best for their hair type yeah for any hairdressers that maybe aren't au okay with the curl typing system would you be able to do like a quick breakdown Ooh. <laughs> or just like of like a, what is a curl as opposed to a, like a coil or Okay, like how, do you, how do you talk? So, about there's that? something called the, I think it's called the Universal Curl Guide. Well, that's what I call it because it just makes sense. Yeah. Um, and basically, if you have a type one hair, that means your hair is bone straight, mm-hmm. like um, Asian hair, I suppose you would say, um, doesn't have any hint of a wave. Then you go to a type two, which is where the hair starts to introduce a bit of a wave, a very loose wave. You go to a type three, which then starts to become a curly. I would say I'm a type three. So if you mm-hmm. can, although I'm a bit, yeah. So I'd say I'm pretty much a type three. So yeah. wavy, curly, depending on the time of day, the weather and what yeah. products I've used in my hair. But I would say I'm in the f- type three region. Yeah. And then you get a four, uh, a type four, which is where the hair starts to coil. And then yeah. you go to a, like a tighter kink. Yeah. Cool. And can often be that type of hair can often be described as a coarse type of hair, but actually, in reality, that is the most fragile, fine hair. Yeah, and you know, requires the most care. There's so much to learn, I think, for so many people about um, different curl types. And Absolutely. I think as black people, we take it as a given because we've always had to know how to do our own hair, but. It, what I want to talk to you about as well is obviously there's a lot of discourse during the pandemic on top yeah. of that, yeah. the Black Lives Matter movement. Yeah. And then as an offshoot of that, we got into a lot of conversations in the industry about Afro hair education. Did, yeah. Um, and I just wanted to know what, how that affected you and how you felt about it during that time as well. It's, it's tricky. It's, I mean, it's it's always been in the, the the forefront of my mind or the back of my mind even you know sort of knowing that hair equality it's it's never been a huge issue or it has been a huge issue in the, in the UK um i've had situations myself where i have been sidelined in you know over a a, a, a stylist that for i'll give you an example so um I had a client who was going to do a huge uh, fashion campaign. Mm -hmm. She's a black client. She has a weave. The company got in contact with me for me to put in the weave. But on the actual shoot day, 
a white stylist was asked to come in and style the hair, even though the hair was done already. So this is something, and I've had a lot of situations like that. So firstly, you know, this has been something that's been in my, you know, in my presence for a long, long time. Yeah. Um, so having this conversation start up about hair equality and education is, I'm so happy that it's happening. Yeah. Um, another thing I, I wanted to say is that I was speaking to a, a, a blogger recently and she was sort of she's taken the stance of all hairdressers should be able to do afro hair right my stance is and maybe a little bit controversial i don't know um afro hair is a specialist subject i believe mm -hmm. it really is um yes i think that you know hairdressers should be there sh it should be part of the, the curriculum mm -hmm. In college, however, however, the point is, <laughs> if you had a issue with your neck, for instance, would you go to a GP, general practitioner, or would you go to a neck specialist? Yeah. Okay, right. and that, that's how I that's how I think about it when it comes to Afro hair. Yeah, great. You can go to a hairdresser that knows about hair and can and should be able to give you general advice. But if you want something specifically done, maybe go to an Afro salon. I don't yeah. know. May, is that, I don't know. Maybe that is a bit too controversial. I don't know. Um, no, I'd, I agree. I think that everyone should have a, a broad knowledge of anything yeah. so that if I went to any salon, I could get my hair cut yeah, and, and what the state was in. But yeah. I do think that everyone, like, you know, in writing, you have a specialism that I couldn't go and report on politics because I don't... Right. I haven't learned that. I've right. only learned how to report on hair, hairdressing and beauty. So, yeah. I also <laughs> believe in um, hairdressers supporting one another. Um, and if I were to have, and, and you know, I'd like, I always like to flip the table. So, if I was to have a, I don't know, a Scandinavian blonde with baby fine highlights, I can do it, right? Yeah. That's what they want. I can do it. Am I comfortable doing it? Honestly, no, I'm not. And so what I would do is recommend them to a person that I know is well-versed in that subject, for instance. Right. And I, be, I strongly believe that hairdressers need to support other hairdressers. And yeah. so if someone has someone come in and say, do you know what? I'm not, just be honest. Don't have a go mm. because it's not right. I don't, I don't, I don't believe that it's right. Just having a go, oh, let's just see. And, you know, oh, it's so, you know, let's just touch and feel what it's like. Just, you know, we're, so we can take a picture of Instagram and, you know, we can show that we do Afro hair. No, don't do that. What you should do is verse yourself in specialists in, in each and every type of hair and go, look, I know someone that would be better off or where you'd feel more comfortable i'm not comfortable doing this type of hair you know and just be honest rather than like i said having a go having a go obviously it's quite early to feel like there has been like a big difference and there's mm -hmm. still many things that are probably in the background happening to hopefully mm -hmm. continue the movement but do you feel like you've been supported or, or like you can see maybe there's um turning a little bit or no Do I feel like I'm being supported? Yeah, I feel like the fact that people are um, maybe a little bit more respectful of what we do and our talent and, you know, the, the, you know, it, I just think it's, I feel a little bit more appreciated. Supported, maybe not, but definitely more appreciated and definitely sort of being considered up there with my peers, you know, I, I feel like, that's better mm -hmm. um a little bit <laughs> um but yeah it, i think it's I, I also think it's early days yeah so we'll see i think give it a year and let's see if this is this continues and you know well the, the proof is in the pudding when those you know if those jobs start rolling in mm. you know what you know if i get booked or not and that that's essentially where yeah. it is
I think it's just important to carry on these conversations. I know that obviously this was a chat about, you know, the salon and texture, yeah. but I just think it's, you know, the elephant oh, in the room. You don't talk about it. Massively important, massively important. Yeah. There is, I mean, it's like an onion. You can, you start peeling back the layers and you just go deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, and then you start crying. Yeah. <laughs> honestly I mean I've I've had some moments in the yeah. salon and, and outside and just reading people's stories and you know things that have happened with their hair and it's just it's I mean it's not on some things yeah. that happen and how they've been treated because of their hair type yeah you know? um so no it's it's a very very interesting conversation um, we've had a comment on Facebook that just says, I love your work, Michelle. So Thank I thought that would be nice to bring the mood up a Thank little bit. You. <laughs> um, she's also asked, what has been the most popular treatment you have done since you've been back in the salon? Most popular treatment definitely has to be texture release. Mm -hmm. Definitely, without a doubt. Um, anyone that doesn't, under obviously the, it, you can kind of understand with the name, but how do you, would you have to say how it works a little bit? Um, Basically, it releases the texture of hair, texture yeah. release. Um, it uses amino acids to penetrate the hair shaft, which basically, and then you do the uh, smoothing system with the flat iron. But you can really use it, you can use it like a conditioning tool, you can use it like a tool almost as opposed to just a a, a treatment. Yeah. That makes sense. So, depending on my client's hair type, and depending on their de desired result, mm -hmm. you can use it as much or as little as you like. It's really, really flexible. Like yeah. some people want to wear their, they still want to have natural hair without mm -hmm. like a relaxer, but they want to still wear it straight, which is fine. You can do that. Yeah. Um, and it just basically releases the texture of their hair. So when they blow dry and smooth their hair with flat irons, they can, it, it sort of lasts and it doesn't poof up. And, yeah, you know, go frizzy or whatever. Um, I had a client just yesterday, I'm about to post a story who wanted to wear, she's got really short hair, natural hair. She'd mm. been relaxing her hair for, again, 20 years. Um, but she still wants to be able to have the flexibility of wearing a short, relaxed type haircut, but yeah. also wants to wear it curly. So we, I just used it enough just so she can still wear her hair curly. And, and it's reversible gorgeous. it's not permanent. Yeah, well it's not reversible what it does it washes out over four months mm. so it's not a permanent treatment and it washes out gradually yeah on the hair it's fantastic yeah. really really great product and we got to wrap up in a second so i'm going to ask you my last question is what did um lockdown teach you as a person and as a hairdresser as a person and as a hairdresser it taught me patience it taught me patience, it taught me kindness, um, and, and just to be s sensitive as a human being to everyone's needs and everyone's concerns. Um, you know, and it, what's really made me realize is that my opinion on the whole pandemic is not the same as somebody else's and not to, you know, be angry at them for that or, you know, be like, coming at them like well why didn't you do this or why didn't you do it? just just to be patient i've realized with a lot of clients coming back in you know everyone's experience has been completely different um you know and and some quite some quite surprising things you know i'll give you one very quick example where a client came in quite a young client really vibrant she's always worked in fashion you know she's really really strong girl like really yeah. sassy great girl she came in and you know her confidence was on the floor and having to sort of scrape her up off the floor and 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 pick her energy up was really tough for me actually yeah. but really really worthwhile but I've realized like I said you, you people that you think who you know didn't wouldn't normally suffer in something like this have really suffered and actually some of the people that you thought oh they're gonna crumble up at They've come through like troopers. So yeah. it's been it's been a real eye opening experience. Um, one of which I'm very very grateful for. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Michelle. You're so Honestly, welcome. Such, such a pleasure to talk to you. Where where can people find you? Um, yeah, around the internet. 
<laughs> so <laughs> my Instagram is hair by Michelle Sultan. Um, I'm also brand ambassador and uh, creative director for a brand called Imbue. So if you go on Imbue, at Imbue Curls, you can have a look at um, some of the products that I endorse, which are amazing. I know I'm not allowed to talk about this, but they are amazing. They're all Curly Girl Method approved. and I like them too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're ama- honestly um it's a brand that i really believe in they're all about curl positivity and just i um, feel so blessed to be able to work with them so yeah go on there and have a look amazing michelle have a lovely weekend you, and i'm sure we'll speak again soon i hope so thank you bye see you later bye guys